text and email an email this morning um but basically the fire in the gorge has gotten a little worse overnight the wind picked up and uh steve said that that some crews went back out at midnight and found and started doing some more suppression as they saw it trying to progress and then they went out he went out at 4 a.m. and I know Fayetteville was out there at least since 4 a.m. with him doing some more suppression. He told the National or the um, Park Service people that he's not. It, I didn't understand why the Park Service is having its meeting about the fire in Glen Jean at his office instead of somewhere near the fire. <laughs> like there seems to be no urgency on that side with the sun coming up at seven and they're, them not setting their meeting until eight in Glen Jean. Um, I don't know if that's because they have somebody who's, you know, uh, you know, pretty green superintendent making these calls or what the deal is, but it doesn't make sense to me from an operational perspective that they're, you know, in there. Um, however, uh, I'm sure they have a reason. I know that's where most of their people are. Um, but for our side, they don't even get a start until eight. And Steve told me that, a lot of our volunteers have to work today. Um, so they're trying to split labor with the park service and the people the park service have called in, including from Shenandoah National Park to um, have the park service cover the daylight hours because our volunteers are mostly available, of course, after work. So that's something that I have on a list for us to address later. But for, for now, Steve asked that we go ahead and authorize um, the guard funding, he, it sounds like he's reluctant to pull the trigger on it just yet. He's hoping the park service can call in some air support. Um, but he won't be able to find out what they're able to do until after their eight o'clock meeting. Um, but he said, as far as we're concerned, you know, he, he did want us to go ahead and figure out how we could get some help in should they need it. So it sounds to me like he doesn't want us to, you know, contact the National Guard to get them started yet, but he, he would like us to go ahead and meet and get the funding. Fridley had sent the drone up at about 6.30. He and Cyphers went out there and um, was getting the footage to Steve at around, I think he called me about 7.20 or so, and he was going to get the footage to see if so they can review. What they could see, um, he said didn't seem so bad, but, but he thought that they might need to send it up at a different location closer to Gaymont Mountain to see what's going on on that side of things. And he was going to follow up and, and let me know. Um, so do you guys have any thoughts about this? I know Tom mentioned uh, when I called him, thought we were going to do a conference call just a minute ago that um, we, you know, could probably use fire levy funds for this um, if, if necessary. And I also think there's some possibility that we could get reimbursed from the governor um, depending on the need and that sort of thing. I know that Todd Gunter gave him a hot heads up last night about what was going on here uh, because I don't have contacts for that office other than Chelsea Ruby and that hasn't been an effective one for me. So does anybody have any comments or other commissioners? Could you weigh in please? I'm concerned with the, the winds that are gonna be picking up um, with the report that we received earlier, I mean, the winds are going to climb from eight to 10 on up higher. Um, and we all know that that's a very steep area. So the fire's going to go straight up regardless of what happens. Um, I, I don't feel that we should use the fire, fire levy monies. Um, if we're going to do it, I think that uh, perhaps Ruth can find a way for us to do it. Uh, and as far as getting refunded for the amount, we probably will be able to get that since it is, you know, part of the national park and it's threatening homes around the national park. Uh, but I'm in favor of, of let's go ahead. If they want the support, let's go ahead and get it for them. I mean, I, I agree with the support. I, I agree with even using uh, either funds. I think we can get reimbursed, but even if you, that, that's what the fire levy funds is for, I would say would be part of it, supporting anything on fire. So I'm, I, I go either way. 
Okay. And I, and I agree with that. And I think we can get, you know, in the meantime, we can get a legal opinion on whether there are any restrictions um, that, you know, depending on where we have to pull the money or if we need to reimburse or that sort of thing. Um, so in case I didn't mention it, the, the cost, the estimated cost is 30,000 a day for six hours of support um, due to the um, frequent need to refuel every hour and 45 minutes in Beckley. Um, so that they'll, they'll be able to fly here from Parkersburg. They would have to refuel in Beckley. They want to, they were going to try to take off if we gave them word uh, by eight to 815, they were going to activate everybody and leave Parkersburg at 930 and would be in the gorge by 11. And that was the plan that they laid out to Kevin last night that I forwarded everybody in text. So, um, I mean, I really, I don't know what we're waiting for. Um, I, I'm a little concerned that, that in some of his questions, and I did have a talk with them that Steve was trying to make the decisions with financial considerations in mind. And I really think that those are our decisions to make. Um, and, you know, he told me we'll try to hold off as long as possible, but at the same time, I mean, I appreciate his, his instinct to save money, but at the same time, you know, I really would like to have a, a, a decision based on, you know, what they think the situation calls for, um, without the money considerations in there, because, you know, it is kind of heading toward more homes. We already have homes that were in danger and evacuated in Wild Rock. And now it's heading toward, you know, Victor. So, um, you know, to me, that's, you know, that requires more, pr you know, prudence and caution than, um, than a situation that was only, you know, brush. Right. Anybody else? What time, what time is the uh, national park meeting supposed to take place at eight o'clock? Yeah. Is there any way that, that Kevin can somehow get the call in to that meeting so that we know what's going on? And as soon as we get the word, we can push the button and make this happen. Commissioner, I'm actually, uh, as soon as this meeting's up, I'm stopping by the park service on my way in because that's where it's going to be at is there on my way through. So my intention okay. is to pull in on that meeting and sit in to see what's being said. Okay, thanks, Kevin. And can you please update us? on you know what their thoughts are absolutely well, absolutely well, as soon as i find out stuff and here's another consideration um the um shoot now i've lost my train of thought i haven't had a whole lot of sleep. <laughs> um oh, i have totally lost my train of thought kevin reminded me of it and now now i've i've forgotten um but i feel like you know, we need to, we need to make a decision and then on the money. And then that doesn't mean we have spent it. You know what I mean? We just have to make a decision about whether to authorize it and under what circumstances we're going to authorize it. Um, and then at that point, you know, we can, you know, and I think in a group text kind of, you know, make the call. Yeah, so once once this commission makes that agreement for to expend those monies, once I figure out exactly what's going on, I'm going to actually meet Mr. Crookshanks on site uh, to see what he has as well. That way I can get a good feel of everything. I will report back in a group text to everyone. And then at that point, um, you guys can make the decision on whether to pull the trigger or what needs to be done. Um, also, I have Mr. Jay Young in my pocket to fly a drone again. He's the one that volunteered last night to do the mapping for us. He went out and did uh, nighttime mapping. So he has the map from last night versus the map we could get him to fly today to see what the extent is, how it expanded, well, or all of that. Kevin, Fridley is already out there with the drone. He's already been out there with Cypher since 6.30 this morning getting some footage of that and they were going to compare steve was going to compare that footage to last night because we were trying to use our um county equipment 
for that sort of thing rather than volunteers. Right. We do and have Steve, a drone with you, the sheriff's department. Steve told me that they was using it, but it, they wasn't able to map it. So I don't know if there's a difference in it. Okay. Well, if there is, then that's significant. But I do want us after this to look into getting one because this is the second time in what two or three months that um, we have needed the assistance of a drone and not had it. Yes, ma'am. And I've actually um, I've actually looked into funding methods for that to get us one that's very uh, high tech on what we need. And it's uh, well, a couple of grand. Well, a couple of grand is something you just need to bring to the commission and not spend time on funding issue, you know, funding request or funding sources, I guess is what I mean. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, what, what I thought of is the point that I'm, that I forgot and have now remembered is Kevin has already put in the request to the state emergency management division, which has pushed it up to the national guard. The only reason the national guard has not pulled the trigger yet is because I have been able to communicate directly with, uh, it and Kevin has been communicating directly with, um, general, I've been communicating with general crane who of course is the head of the guard and he's waiting for a thumbs up, but technically they've already been engaged. I mean, we haven't paid for it. So that's a part of the process. We asked for the help. And if we say that we can afford it, then he has to go to the governor and the governor has to approve them helping us. Um, now that doesn't mean the governor won't come back and, and help us with you know funding afterward, but, but um, he said that would facilitate the process because otherwise then they would go to the governor and then they'd have to wait for the funding decisions to happen. They would go to his office or whoever he's. A... So I wanted to point out, you know, that technically we've already engaged them because Steve told us last night to go ahead and do that. Kevin did it. And then minutes later, he said, well, maybe not. And then maybe so. And then can we get some permission? So I'm starting to wonder, you know, um, you know, where our drop dead time is for this like you know winter i know we could call them out at any time but at the same time they're ready to scramble and if we have a situation that's out of control we want to pull the trigger on it sooner than later bill crane also mentioned general crane also mentioned that he has a cabinet meeting with the governor i think at 9 30 this morning so he's going to be in a forum where he's going to have direct access to him um at that point well, well, let's go, let's ahead, go and ahead and I will approve. I will approve the thirty thousand dollar expense. And Ruth, can is there some way we can make that happen? Can we do a lot of how many days? That, that's thirty thousand for six hours. I'm pretty sure they're going to need more than six hours. Well, here's the thing: they they think they're expecting rain from the hurricane to come in after midnight this evening. And they're not going to be able to fly or fight the fire after dark because of the terrain and, and the conditions, the so, visibility. So what what so we're just talking about doing one thirty thousand dollar lot for today or tomorrow? I would say one thirty thousand for for today or or if they don't spend it today for tomorrow. But but I would like to suggest that we reconvene at one o'clock. Um, since we have a staff meeting at that time anyway, uh, to get an update. And then we could decide at that time whether we are going to uh, need to allocate more funds. Well, based on I mean, what we know. Could we, could we go ahead and see if we have three, three six hour days and a lot, go ahead and a lot, uh, uh, 90,000 aside, just in case. So we don't have to, uh, I mean, that's why I would like to do it if we could. But if Ruth? not, y'all want to go 30000 at a time. I mean, that's... Yes. What do you think? I mean, I know I can find thirty. I think ninety's pushing it. <laughs> um, I'm not sure where I would find 90000 Okay, so we if, if it did go above 30 one day, we would have to seek funding somewhere else. Yeah, you'd have to consider using, like, the ARPA funds or something like that. Okay, well, I, I think we can do that. Um, what do you think, John, about one versus three days? And well, I, 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 think I that, understand where Tom is coming from because, you know, just to facilitate operations. Well, I think we should approve the 30000 for this morning 
in order to get them out. And at one o'clock, we'll see what's going on and then we can make the decision on the other two days at that time. So do, do we feel comfortable? So John said to get them out. Do we feel comfortable going ahead and telling Steve, look, you know, we're comfortable with pulling the trigger on activating them immediately and, and go from there? Or do we want to wait until, you know, he spends more time thinking about it and I getting think so more. Triggered. Yeah. I, I, that's where I'm leaning. And that's where I've been leaning since last night. Um, because it did, it did whip up. He did sound like it, you know, the urgency had increased since last night, things had changed, um, because of the wind. And, um, and I realized there may be more information coming on and the park service may be able to bring resources to bear, but I don't know if the bureaucracy within the park service is going to allow, you know, water drops on private property. You know, I mean, that's that's been an issue that I think we need to hammer out with the new superintendent once the new superintendent reports, the permanent one. Um, but, you know, how do we handle these kind of things in the future? Because there seemed to be some confusion about what forestry's role was, what our, you know, what our role as commission is, what the, you know, you know, incident commander does. And then Kevin, you know, it, it's just how is everything supposed to flow and how do we deconflict? with the park service because they do have these rules where, you know, um, I think that's why they had to call an extra crew so their crews could get enough rest according to the regulation. And then the others could fight the blaze, you know, while they're doing that. Um, so, you know, I think they're, I would be concerned that even if they were able to call in, you know, water, you know, are they going to dump it on wild rock or Victor, or are they just going to dump it on anything that's park land and stop there? You know what I mean? Well, I think that, that we need to make a call. The uh, winds from this hurricane are gonna be coming through first before the, the uh, actual rain does. Uh, and sitting here in Gent, I've watched some plastic when I first came out, mm -hmm. there was no wind at all. And now it's starting to blow. Uh, and, and that's what concerns me because again, with that terrain, fire's going to go straight up and it's going to end up you know doing some more damage than what we want it to do well how about how about we compromise and you know authorize the 30 ruth can come up with and then another 30 from arpa or another source and then and then we can we can schedule a um a special meeting you know over zoom tomorrow that we can cancel if we don't need it if we think we we might need a third day you want to do that or what what do you think well i think that we can look at that at one o'clock when we have our admin meeting uh, i'm comfortable with doing the thirty thousand right now um but with the rains coming in and with what they're calling for 100 percent chance of rains uh, i think that the rain's going to really do a lot of the battling for us tonight tom yeah, I'd, I'd rather have the other 30 and go 60, but uh, just in case. But, uh, and then, you, you know, you don't have to spend it. As long as it's uh, allocated, you don't have to spend it. Right. Well, do you want to make a motion then? I make a motion to approve $60,000. All right. Well, I, go ahead. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Okay, so um, Ruth, John opposed, Tom and I um, approved 60, up to 60. And we'll figure out the details um, at the staff meeting and then we'll address it in a public meeting subsequent. Sounds good. All right, does anything, anybody have anything to add, Kevin? Uh, yes, ma'am, I just wanted to, I didn't know if, uh... Mr. Crookshanks let you know or not, he advised me that the fire actually has jumped Chestnut Bird Road. Um, no, I, he did not. Um, yeah, he, I'm gonna he, go ahead and text General Crane um, that we are going ahead. Um, and I just did that, so that's done. And I will follow up with Steve and let him know that that we're we've already decided you know based on all the input he's given us that
that we're going to go ahead and fund it. Yeah, he uh, when he called me, giving me an update, he said the fire did jump Chestnut Berg and it's going up towards AOG. He um, went ahead and briefed and said fire department because it was going down towards their area as well. And I told him that uh, I had to get on this Zoom call and we cut the the uh, the call short. So I'll be leaving here, going to the park service to meet up with Stan and the crew to see what I can find out there. And then after that, according to the information that I'm getting from Andy Hickenbotham, uh, he's from the National Guard. And I can't remember the other gentleman's name, but I have to meet them. Bill Persinger. Yeah, Bill. I have to meet them at the, uh, the airport there at uh, Hinkle to secure a landing zone because they're going to land there. Okay. All righty. Um, well, please keep updating um, us in the um, text thread that we have with you um, on, on what's going on there. And I'll do the same. Yep. I'll keep everybody in loop. I'm, I've got everybody tagged in the, the right text this time. So I'm good. <laughs> I do want to ask okay. one more question. What is the chance of the rain this evening? hundred percent. hundred percent this afternoon. Like what time is that? Hang on. After just, midnight is what I, is what the last I heard was. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. And um, heavy rain is expected overnight starting at 0, 0100. So Starts 1 starting at 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it says it could be up to an inch to an inch and a half of rain. Well, that's a good thing right there. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. And the temperature will drop too, which will help. Um, but anyway, I, I think we've made the right decision. Does anybody else have any um, thing to add? Okay, well, I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All, All right. right, thanks everybody. See you this afternoon.